The Simpsons, the most recognizable American family. The show spans a whopping 31 years and still airs to this day, making it the longest running scripted television series on earth. This gave the show time to develop layers of mysteries and complexities, some more lighthearted and others just plain creepy. In this video, we will be covering The Simpsons Iceberg. Most of you probably already know how an iceberg works, but for those who are not familiar with the concept, let me explain. We start at the surface level, covering things most people already know, and work our way down to the abyss, covering the least known slash unsettling facts as we move down. Some of the topics on this iceberg are not going to be covered, either due to it not having enough information to back it up, having no reality and truth, or simply just too obvious. Either way, let's get into this. Get comfy and grab a snack, this may take a while. Springfield is in Oregon. Springfield is in Oregon is a reference to the city the Simpsons characters live in, being named after a real city in the state of Oregon, Matt Groening, the creator of the show's home state. He chose the name because it was a common generic city name across America, making it more relatable. If you go to Springfield, Oregon today, you'll find murals and statues of the characters themselves. The X-Files Crossover The X-Files Crossover is the 10th episode of Season 8. In this episode, Homer believes that he has discovered aliens in his hometown of Springfield referencing popular X-Files scenes from the series. I don't know why this is on the iceberg other than the episode being a bit more unsettling than the rest. The Stonecutters The Stonecutters is a fictional secret society within the animated series. In season 6 episode 12, Homer borrows his father's Stonecutters membership card to join the club. The fictional secret society draws many parallels to that of the real life Freemasons, displaying many Freemasonry symbols in the episode and even outright saying that Homer's father is indeed a Mason. In order to join the club, Homer is subjected to being ridiculed and degraded, but after is given many perks that are not available to the rest of society. The Simpsons predicted real life events. Many believe that the Simpsons episodes have been able to predict many real life events and discoveries, like 9-11, Trump becoming the president of the United States, the universe taking the shape of a donut, and the prediction of the God particle. Many believe that these are just mere coincidences but I personally believe that they may have subconsciously inspired these concepts. Black Smithers Smithers is a character in The Simpsons that serves as the evil henchman to Mr. Burns. He was originally black in the first appearance, but ever since was depicted as yellow, like the majority of the characters. It was clearly explained that it was due to an error in the animation studio and that he was originally supposed to be yellow, but another animator later came out to explain that Smithers was actually meant to be black and also gay, but proved too much for the audience at the time, afraid that they might be called out for racism due to Smithers' subservient nature. They changed him back to yellow. Frank Grimes Frank Grimes was a character introduced in the 23rd episode of the 8th season as Homer Simpson's nemesis, working twice as hard but only achieving half of what Homer Simpson has. He despises him. If you analyze the episode in depth, Frank is depicted as a serious, smart man and represents conservatives, while Homer Simpson is the liberal who is lazy and disinterested in work. The episode was written by a strong conservative writer and clearly depicts his views. Matt Groening's initials are hidden in Homer's design. This one explains itself. You can see the M right here and the G right here, kind of, for Matt Groening. Michael Jackson Michael Jackson appeared as a guest voice actor in the episode Stark Raving Dad. Al Jean, the showrunner for The Simpsons, said that Michael Jackson took the role to groom kids easier. He regrets casting him for the role, but is weary of calling Michael out. His voice was removed in new releases, all this in response to the documentary Leaving Neverland, which exposes Michael Jackson as a pedophile. Five Finger God Five Finger God is in reference to the fact that every single character in The Simpsons has four fingers, except for God. God is the only one depicted to have five fingers, that's pretty much it. Now let's move on to the shallow waters. Death of Grandma Flanders Grandma Flanders reappears as a flashback in season 26, after a brief introduction years back. In this episode, she was put in charge of Bart and Lisa, who were toddlers. She appears to have died halfway through the episode, but somehow was revealed to survive. Not the darkest episode, but definitely adds to the lore. Marge has webbed toes. Marge is exposed for having webbed toes in the episode Marge in Chains, though she is revealed as being very attractive in the Simpsons universe and has a perfect figure in the later seasons. Snowball 2 is actually Snowball 5. Snowball is the Simpsons house cat. Snowball 5 is presented as the new and improved Snowball that replaced Snowball 2 when Dr. Herbert hit her with his car. Somehow there is a theory out there that Snowball 2 and Snowball 5 are actually the same cats. The B-Sharps Royalty Remember when I said that 
Frank Grimes was envious of Homer Simpson for being lazy but having twice the achievements. This theory states that the only reason Homer Simpson can afford all his crazy shenanigans is because he receives royalties from his days when he was part of a band called the B-Sharps. Album and tour ticket sales would be a hefty compensation that could be supporting his family financially and supports this theory. Mr. Smithers' Father Mr. Smithers' father, Waylon Smithers, was Mr. Burns' previous assistant at the nuclear power plant in Springfield, dying of radiation poisoning, sacrificing his life to save Springfield and his son. After dying, Mr. Burns disposed of his corpse down a drain to cover up his death. Homer Simpson finds his body years later as a young adult, and it traumatizes him for life. This is one of the darker aspects of the series, but is 100% true and is in the show. Hans Sprungfield Jebediah Springfield was the founder of Springfield and was held as a respected historical figure in the town. That is, until Lisa proves that Jebediah Springfield is actually Hunt Springfield, a bloodthirsty pirate whose main enemy was none other than George Washington. Hugo Simpson is real. Hugo Simpson is a non-canon character who is Bart's conjoined twin, separated after they came out of the womb. He is portrayed as Bart's evil twin. I guess this iceberg topic means that he is actually part of the real lore and part of the real Simpsons timeline. Not too sure about this one, but definitely worth a mention. Krusty was originally Homer. Krusty the Clown was designed after Homer Simpson. The original idea was supposed to be that Krusty was Homer's dad all along, essentially Homer Simpson worshipping his own father without knowing, but the idea was scrapped. El viaje misterioso de nuestro Homer. This iceberg topic is in reference to the episode titled El viaje misterioso de nuestro Homer. In this episode, Homer Simpson takes a hallucination trip due to eating a super spicy chili pepper. Homer begins to question his existence and his relationship with Marge. He also contacts his spare guide who leads him through a journey to clarity. This episode is pretty trippy and is a lot different from the rest of the episodes. Marge acknowledges that Homer is an alcoholic and ignores him up until the end where Homer sees his mistake as a husband and they make up. NRA Forever in the opening title sequence, you can see a scene where Maggie is being scanned at a cash register, with the amount reading NRA Forever. Some speculate that the artist added this into the show to support the National Rifle Association, a gun advocacy group known for its far-right views. Pretty weird. Marvin Monroe's supposed death. Marvin Monroe was a local counselor in Springfield for a long time, up until his death. Statues signifying his passing can be seen throughout the show, but things get weird. He shows up later in the series and is revealed to be alive at Marge's book signing, saying that he had just been sick the entire time. Mr. Burns' Unusual Lifespan This is in reference to Mr. Burn being the oldest person in Springfield, but also being extremely sick, as explained in this clip. Well, Doc, I think I did pretty well in my tests. You may shake my hand if you like. Well, under the circumstances, I'd rather not. Eh? Mr. Burns, I'm afraid you are the sickest man in the United States. You have everything. You mean I have pneumonia? Yes. Juvenile diabetes? Yes. Hysterical pregnancy? A, a little bit, yes. You also have several diseases that have just been discovered in you. I see. The whole family are geniuses. This iceberg theory puts forth the idea that all the Simpson family members are geniuses in their own way. I found a few sources on this, but a post on Reddit seems to condense it down pretty well. Reading, my theory is that everyone in the Simpsons family is a genius, but Lisa is the only one who embraces it. Grandpa may be senile, but his flashbacks show him doing a number of things that require a variety of skills, such as being a fighter pilot and an accomplished pianist. That suggests that he at least has an above average intelligence. Marge was an excellent student but chose a life as a housewife because it makes her happy. This is important because everyone besides Lisa chooses happiness over intelligence. Homer would be one of the smartest men to ever live except for the crayon he lodged in his head at an early age. The crayon was briefly removed in one of the episodes and it's revealed that he is a genius doing things such as proving God doesn't exist but he put it back in order to avoid ostracism from his friends and community. Unlike Marge, his choice is more serious. Measurable, but a genius, or happy, but a moron. Bart essentially makes the same decision as his father at a much younger age, and without having to alter his brain in any way. This finalizes the surface level and shallow waters part of the iceberg. Thanks for sticking with me this far. Part 2 is sure to come out soon if this is well received and gets enough views, but be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications when it comes out. Later.